Hello, everyone. Uh, I see that most people have started joining. Uh, first of all, welcome to uh, Brightcom's Layout and Content Vitals. Uh, brought to you by Brightcom, obviously. We're going to speak a lot about a lot of different material today. And uh, to start, what will uh, to start before we're starting actually the material? I would like to introduce myself, obviously, just uh, so that we get to know each other a little bit. Uh, so my name is Joel. I've been working at Brightcom for for over a year now in the inventory team. In addition to that, I've been also responsible for the layout policy, which is what we're going to be speaking uh, mostly about today. And as a bonus, uh, I cook mad lasagna. So for whoever has uh, joined this webinar today, uh, if you come one day to our offices, hopefully maybe in the in the future, our partners, our future partners, then uh, you're more than welcome to uh, enjoy some of that uh, good lasagna. So that said, let's uh, continue to the agenda. We'll see about what we're gonna speak today. First of all, uh, as I said, it, we're going to speak mainly about layout and uh, content vitals. This means how ad units, how uh, content should look on your website. Um, generally, I would like to explain to you before we're, we're explaining what are things that can be done, what can't be done. I would like you to know what are, uh, why it should be important for you. Um, the do's and don'ts, what are the things that you should put on your website? What are the things that you should that should be avoided? This is what we're gonna go over. Uh, best practices, just generally for, for uh, everyone. Uh, just so you know, this uh, specific best practices that we're gonna show you are materials that we have arranged for smaller publishers, for bigger publishers, so for everyone. Um, obviously, we know that even the smallest mistakes can happen even with the biggest publishers. So, and we, and I'm saying that from own experience with our clients. So generally, I think that this can be a webinar that can be very appealing and interesting to uh, all the viewers which are with us today. Um, obviously, RPM impact, how can, uh, how can uh, ad layout content, how you should place ad units can have impact on RPM. This is what we're gonna speak about today, how you can keep consistent RPMs. Uh, we'll also touch a bit upon SEO. Uh, which is also very relevant to today's webinar, and we'll end up with questions. And just before uh, we'll speak about uh, what we're going to discuss today, I would just like to notice uh, as part of this webinar, the chat is closed, so we will not be able to put uh, anything inside the chat, but there's a Q&A, which you will see uh, below, above, to your left, to your right, there's a Q&A box. Here you can just write your questions, just for your notice, the questions are anonymous which means that I will get to see them, obviously. I will read them also out to everyone, but uh, it's anonymous. So in other words, not everyone is going to see uh, your question. So you can feel free uh, to just ask whatever you want, whatever, you, whatever comes to your mind. So that said, uh, I would say let's dive in. Uh, but first of all, I, we have prepared a poll for you guys, uh, which we will just take out now. And I would want to see where we're standing uh, at the start of this webinar based on the answers that we're getting. So in front of you, you'll just see the poll now, uh, which says how important do you consider ad layouts, just generally. So it can range from very important to not important, the other extreme, or a little important, but not enough to do a lot about it. So uh, we'll give you a few seconds to uh, answer uh, whatever you think suits best to you. And then we will see uh, what most of the people have uh, responded uh to this poll so i'm very looking forward to uh to hear and to learn what uh where we're standing today with the people on this webinar so we'll give you a okay 10, I, I, will, I will close the, the poll in 10 seconds from now great Okay, I'm closing and I'm uh, sharing the results. Great. So what do we will see here? So we have 85%, uh, uh, which says that they find it very important ad layout. Some think that it's not important at all. And then we also have the second biggest uh, percentage here that says that it's a little important. 
it or or perhaps not you don't have the required tools or you don't know exactly how you need to uh, engage with how your content uh, and layout looks on your website. So that's quite very interesting already. I find the fact that uh, most of you think that it's important already quite positive signs. So I'm happy about that. And uh, uh, I think we're already on the right track then. And uh, the goal, like I said, is to show you what uh, the best practices should be for you. And uh, hopefully you will be able to learn uh, much more after today's webinar. So that said, let's uh, dive into some uh, stats in our next slide. So uh, we've summed up three stats for you today, uh, which are very interesting in my opinion. The first one is from Swear. Uh, it's a company that manages how uh, the layout of websites just looks generally. Uh, so they're quite relevant, you could say, to this webinar. And what they have seen according to their study is that nearly 90% of online consumers will probably not return to a site if the experience was bad. So that's already quite a uh, high number, honestly. Um, then we also have Adobe, which is probably a big company that everyone knows. I don't have to explain, describe them that much, I guess. Uh, they say that eight on 10 people will stop engaging with your website if the mobile version doesn't display well. So that's also something that we're gonna discuss today. Desktop device, mobile device, the differences. Um, this is also already quite big, especially when we know that the trends in the world are that mobile is becoming more and more uh, significant for your user base. So uh, something which is very interesting as well, this study. And uh, finally, a study that we've taken from Deloitte from 2019, uh, so just two years back, that says that even decreasing your mobile site load by just a split of a second, so even under a second, can result in major increases in conversion rates for that same website. So specific examples here are that eight uh, are around 8%, which uh, is higher conversion rates for retail sites and just 10% for travel sites. So I think this is actually also a very interesting study. I think it really shows that it's not big changes that need to be made uh, for big differences. Even the small changes, when you're looking at it at a mass scale can be very, uh, can be very positive for the publishers uh, just in a gener uh, generally, in other words. So uh, that said, let's dive into uh, the do's and don'ts. Just before we dive in, uh, we've split it out in layout, which is how ad units should uh, be placed around your website. That will be one uh, subject. And then the second one will be content, which is also what we're gonna be speaking about. And we'll kind of uh, distribute it in those two uh, segments. So we'll start with layouts. Um, so yeah. Um, by the way, the the what you're gonna see to what you're gonna see now uh, over the next few slides are common mistakes that we see. So we've really tried to sum up the biggest things that we see on our publishers and that we see from our own experience, just generally. So first, uh, layout policy that we would like to speak to you about today is encouraging clicks. Uh, this kind of evolves around not, uh, not um, giving the right incentive to your users as a publisher. So what does this mean? As you see to your uh, right here in a screenshot, this is quite a more extreme case. So obviously it wouldn't happen like that. But what you see here is, for example, a website that is asking its users to click on ads. Uh, here it's, like I said, very uh, uh, direct uh, uh, labeling, let's say. But generally we see some publishers uh, placing, for example, just on top of an ad, uh, that clicking on an ad can really help support the website because it will help them monetize better. Or uh, they will just write a, a label that's really not uh, relevant to the ad itself, but more to the content, which gives the impression to the user that it's not an ad and which gives them the incentive to click on an ad, but not because you wanted to. So the main uh, takeaways I would say from here is to avoid giving incentive to your users to click on ads. Just generally, users should click on ads because they want to click on ads. And just not labeling ads, just generally. So not even if you're not giving the, the incentive by saying something that's not correct, but just not labeling ads can also give them this impression that it's not an ad uh, and it's part of the content. So um, let's go to the next slide where we where we basically see a mobile device a screenshot from a publisher that we see. I will let you just spot the issue for a few seconds um, so that you can see 
quite what can be the issue over here. So, let's skip to the next slide and we'll show you uh, what, what is the issue according to us. Um, as you see on the bottom layer, maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't see it, there's a part, there's an ant, which is really in between the content and is not labeled, uh, above it at least. Uh, that little ad in blue is uh, something that we added it, so it wasn't labeled at all. And generally, um, this causes the user to click on an ad without its intention. So this is kind of how it shouldn't be done. Uh, if we go to the next slide, we'll see how it should be done. So just here on uh, your, uh, to your right, you'll see uh, just a specific website. You'll see an article to your left, an ad to your right, and you'll just see a uh, label on top of the ad unit, which says advertisement. So the right way, according to us, is to label ads as sponsored or advertisement, uh, one of both, obviously, uh, which is always the right way, according to us. What we see also from, from, uh, our, from performances with our websites is that, for example, a big partner of us, such as Google, which, uh, which buys a lot of traffic, obviously, as you know, we see that when ads are not labeled, they can kind of complain about this, and this can lead to decreasing performances or to lower RPMs. So as, a, as what you should learn from this uh, topic, let's say, is to always try to label ads. Uh, in most cases, that will always be uh, the way to go, I would say. So next we have um, preventing to place ad units near uh, navigational elements. So what does navigational elements mean? Means It means usually content. It can be all kinds of different content though. It can be just an article, for example, but it can also be a scroll bar or it can be a menu, a menu navigation toolbar, which I will show you in the next slide. Um, and this is just part of the content and what, what we would like or what should be prevented here, moreover, is um, these ad units to be, ver to be very close to the content. Why? Because it just causes usually the user to click on an ad when it wasn't its, its intention, the user's intention, actually. So placing it always in a, in a place where it's easy distinguishable from the content is always the way to go. Um, as you see here to your left, you see just an ad which is labeled perfect and it's uh, to the right of the user's screen. And then what you see in the right one is content and you see that the ads are just very close to the, to the, to the content itself, which can lead to perhaps the user trying to click on the content or trying to, to click on the scroll bar, but not on purposely clicking on the ad when it wasn't the intention of the user really. So for this reason, just try to always place place as you add units in places where it's not very close to the content and it can be very easy uh, seen by the user uh, in all the in all cases so another example of that is like I said menu navigation bar this is also something that we quite often see on our website um, what we what what the issue is here actually is that first of all the ad gets overlapped by the menu navigation this can be. This can mean two things. First of all, it can mean that if the user wants to click on one of those options, he could more easily click on an ad. So this can, for this reason, be considered as uh, a bad click, you could say. Uh, and again, less monetization from a big partner such as Google. But it also uh, means that the ad itself, even, even if you clicked on it or didn't click on it, now it's getting overlapped. It means that a brand or an advertiser or an agency on the other side who wants to expose its creative to, to specific users doesn't get to do that just because it's getting overlapped now, uh, even 20%, 25%, it doesn't really matter. It just gets overlapped. And the algorithms of these big partners that buy traffic on a daily basis, your inventory can actually see that. And for this reason, it's always better to avoid uh, putting, uh, for example, such as you see here, a menu navigation bar just on top of the ad. So if you can, what we always try to recommend to our publishers is to, you can have perhaps a menu navigation bar, but it shouldn't be then on top of the ad. The ad unit should be placed in another place. Um, yeah, so, so that is what we definitely uh, would suggest uh, when we're speaking about putting ad units, which are just very close to content or, or across uh, on top of, uh, in front, sorry, or behind content uh, and so on. 
So um, let's continue to anchor ads, something which uh, definitely a lot of uh, our partners, publishers know about. Um, as if you don't know, just a small uh, description, anchor ads, what we mean with that is just ads that just stay in the window of the user. It means that if it's scrolling up, down to the left, to the right, the, the ad just comes with uh, the user, in other words. Um, because the user is getting much more exposed to this, it's a bit more dynamic than just a static ad which stays on its spot. There should be some stuff that the publisher needs to look out for. So we've summed up these three uh, things over here. Um, first of all, you need to try to you need to avoid overlapping sticky ads with other sticky uh, ads or sticky content. That's the first thing. Again, uh, if an if, if a if a brand wants to show a creative to a publisher, then he doesn't want that creative to be covered by another sticky content or another sticky ad. So it should be free. It should be 100% viewable for the user. Second thing is um, to always add a dismissal function on, the, on top of your sticky or, or anchor ad. This is always definitely recommended and can be seen as a violation if you don't do that. Again, it's more dynamic, meaning that the user should be able to just dismiss an ad if you want to. So placing that dismissal function small, seems perhaps like a small detail, but it can again mean a lot uh, of positive stuff if you do it for your performances. So something to definitely look out for. And like in the last point, it kind of correlates with the other points, but I would like to give you a solution or, or what you could do when you're placing, when you decide to place the key ads on your website. Uh, and, the, and the third point is then just, basically preventing to put a dismissal button uh, on the ad, which will overlap with another ad. Why? Because this can cause the user to click on the dismissal, but not on purpose, he will click on the other ad. Second thing, uh, which we definitely suggest for this reason, is that, uh, you know, when there's a sticky ad, for example, on your bottom, uh, on the bottom uh, part of the window of the user, let's say, it's always better to put a rectangular uh, white or black or whatever color you want uh, just under the ad and with a cross dismissal all the way to the right of the ad. And this will basically prevent the dismissal function to overlap other ads. So for example, if we have a sticky ad with a cross dismissal function and the user is scrolling up and down, but there's just static ads everywhere, the dismissal function could be on top of another ad. And just by putting that white, a rectangular or or whatever color it doesn't matter but just a rectangular form uh, uh, below that sticky ad it will lead to there not being any uh, bad clicks or clicks that are not supposed to happen if you would be doing it in the correct way and again uh, this will this will just not hurt the user experience and mean also better uh, performances for you so um we we would like to talk about um about the about the lazy loading sorry so lazy loading um as we see in the next slide or infinity scrolling something that we also see a lot on our publishers what does this mean this is basically a, a layout kind of mistake that we see often with our publishers lazy loading in other words it's when a, a page or the window where your user is now situated on. Uh, he's per perhaps in uh, the above window. And while he's scrolling, the, the page will be already loading other kinds of things which are not in the window of the user. So this is a good thing that can be done by the publisher. Why? Because it just leads to, uh, to uh, the, the website loading in a much more efficient way. Uh, just instead as for example, if it wouldn't happen, then the user will just not uh, we'll have to wait actually for content to be loaded or ads to be loaded in the window where it's not still uh, at this instant. So for this reason, uh, we we suggest and we suggest this especially uh, to to all kinds of publishers just generally. But we suggest to always try to prevent or always try to put ad units which are around the same creative size. Why am I saying this? Because Generally, when ad units are loading in other on other parts of the window, but there's one that's 300 times 600 or one there's 300 times 250, all different kinds of ad units, this will lead to or cause the ad units to load slower than the content because it's always different sizes. 
And this will also make this uh, lazy loading or the infinity scrolling that you have tried to implement on your website much more problematic because what is going to happen basically is that the page is just going to go up, it's going to go down because it's loading at all different kinds of uh, uh, instances. So for that reason, it's always better to avoid uh, misusing this, I would say, just generally uh, the lazy loading part or infinity scrolling. So uh, next, we have also something which I would say we've seen a lot according to, uh, across all our publishers. Uh, and something that we have also seen, I'll explain it to you in a second, but something that we've seen that if you really work on that, uh, we, I'm really speaking from own experience, but we've seen that if you really work on this next thing, it will really uh, help um, monetize your site much, much better. So first of all, I would like to uh, show you the screenshot which you're seeing in front of you. And I would like you to perhaps see if you can spot the issue by yourself. Uh, I will give you a few seconds and then Michal, if we could, uh, I would say in five, 10 seconds from now, just uh, take out the poll uh, so that we can uh, see what, uh, yeah, what uh, the people in this webinar think about this next uh, screenshot. Okay, so I'll share the poll right now. Great. You can vote right now. Yeah, so, so I'll just read it out loud for you. Um, how would you optimize uh, this specific screenshot that you see in front of you? So there's two options. There's optimization one, which is placing as many ads possible on your page in order to maximize your performances. Um, obviously, the more ads you put, that could be the assumption here, the more revenue you're gonna make because you're just getting exposed to much more creatives at once, right? Or you could do maybe the, uh, another kind of optimization, which is placing less ads, um, which are only in different parts of your page. So not necessarily in that one window uh, that you just see uh, in front of you. So we'll just give you, uh, I would say 20, 30 seconds to think about that. Just check out the screenshot uh, and uh, let us know how you would optimize. And then we'll see uh, what the, the verdict is of uh, what you guys have voted for. Okay, so I'll give them uh, 10 more seconds and then I will Great. close it and I will share the results. Okay, I see that the, uh, there is a technical problem and the results cannot be shared, so I will I will read it out loud. Uh, cool. Answer number one got 21%, and answer number two uh, got 79%. 79%. So placing it just uh, across yeah. uh, different parts of the, of the website, in other words, right? Yeah. Okay, great. So, um, Okay, cool. So let's just go to the next slide and then we'll discuss what you guys have answered on the poll. Just a second, we'll go here next. So, okay, so what do we see over here? We see uh, uh, just a regular website with an article. We see to the left an ad, on top of that, on top of an ad unit. We see also to the right two ad units, just one under each other. So what's, what we want to kind of show you here is to avoid having a high ratio of ads to content. So what does it mean to have a high ratio of ads to content? It means that on the window of the user, there's ads, there's content, and you need to keep that ratio in balance. So our own experience is that if you have a percentage or a ratio that's above 50%, meaning that you have, for example, 60% ads, 40% content, or 70% ads and 30% content, this is something that should definitely be avoided. So we always suggest to not go over the 50%, meaning that it's half-half. Um, obviously, you could wonder uh, how can you know if it's 50% or if it's 40% or 60 Obviously, it's not something that you can know. It's not, no one is expecting you to uh, measure it with a ruler. Uh, but it is something that you can see with the eye. And again, it's something that, for example, Google can very easily identify or, or detect uh, with their own algorithms. They can see, okay, there's a spare part of the content, there's ads uh, around it, 
how can we, uh, uh, what, what is the ratio basically in other words? So placing uh, more than 50% is definitely uh, not recommended. What we always suggest is 30%, that's kind of the magic number. Try to stay around that 30% of ads and 70% content. Obviously you need to still monetize at the end of the day your website, but generally it's kind of this, uh, uh, this fallacy that people think that the more uh, ads they place, the better it will be for their performances, right? Because you're getting perhaps money from here, from here, from here, from here. Your RPMs are getting higher and higher. But actually the opposite happens because Google, which wants the user experience to be at its best, poss uh, at its best possible, obviously doesn't want a user to be now exposed to four different ads because first of all, it will hurt the user experience. Second of all, it knows that the user cannot look at the content while it's also looking at four different creatives, four different uh, advertisers. And for that reason, uh, they will not give you as high RPMs or bids on your inventory whenever you are uh, just clustering your, your page with a lot of different ads. So that said, uh, another example is the mobile device. Like I said, uh, in the beginning of the webinar, we'll speak about desktop and mobile. Mobile for ad clustering, obviously, it will be even more uh, noticeable, you could say, because the window is just much smaller for the user. As you see here in the screenshot just uh, in front of you, you see a bit of content. You just see three ads, one on top of each other. This can definitely be considered, considered as ad clustering and in return hurt your performances. So generally, I would also want to emphasize that content uh, or ads layouts in mobile devices and desktop devices can be very different because obviously your place, you're, you're building it in a very different way, uh, your mobile device and your desktop device. So for that reason, uh, always try to check both. If desktop is good, it doesn't mean that mobile is good and other way around uh, also not. So always try to look at both uh, kinds of devices uh, whenever you're placing ads on your, uh, on your website. So, that is layout display, what we've all summed up up until now. Let's uh, just go over video layout, uh, which is also something that Brightcom is focusing on uh, today. Um, as we see here in front of you, different rules, same mindset. What does this mean? What do, what does, uh, obviously the rules are different because it's dynamic. It's much more, uh, it's much less static than just static ads, but the mindset is the same, which means that we still want the user experience to be at its best possible. And we still want brands on the other side, obviously that's what's Google's interest, for example, it wants the user experience to be optimal and also the, the brand's experience to be optimal. So what does this mean for videos? For example, we see sometimes with our websites, and this is definitely a big red, red flag, uh, we see them putting a video player just in front or behind other ad units. This should definitely be avoided just for the reason that again, your uh, a, a creative is not getting exposed fully to the user. So putting your money inside, uh, like uh, putting budgets in uh, into that, let's say, is definitely not recommended. Um, and also just generally placing such as with sticky ads, like we said, it's more dynamic. Always placing a dismissal button is always the, the way to go, I would say. So definitely recommend that. And in the next slide, what we see also is something that we sometimes don't see, but just placing uh, a pause button is always recommended because it just gives, gives uh, the user the possibility to just not be exposed to an ad and same goes for mute button. So what you could learn from here is to have the dismissal function, the, the pause button, let's say also, and the mute, having these three on your video ad unit together with not overlapping other content or ads will really be the, the, the best way to optimize how your layout looks on your website. So that is regarding layout. Next, we have content. So like I said, we were going to speak about layout and content. What, does, what do we mean when we speak about content? Two things. First of all, obviously, again, uh, having bad content, such as violence, dangerous stuff, uh, more medical content, or more aggressive, mean, perverse language, things that are bringing out negative stuff, um, negative uh, emotions or whatever, will not be so uh, positive for the user base, but also not again for the brand base. So this is something that should always be avoided to place your ad units across these kinds of content, but it can also be not the content itself, but the context of the content. So what do we mean with that exactly? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 
we mean with context, what kind of content you have on your website. So just as an example, as you see here in front of you, a violation that we know, for example, again, Google really uh, uh, flags often to us for publishers is when there's ads, for example, on login pages. So why can't ads be on login pages as an example? Just because if, for example, you have a, a, an entertainment site, a news site, a finance website, doesn't matter, but you have also a login uh, page, the user hasn't come for the, he's not coming for the, for the login page. He's coming for the content that you're offering him. What I'm trying to explain here is that if the content is not 100% uh, valuable, if it's not engaging with the user, it's not the reason why the user is coming for, he's coming for the content, obviously. If it's not these kinds of domains, it can also be, so, so like I said, login page, but it can be also an error page, or it can be a privacy policy page, or it can be uh, a terms of service page. These are all pages which are quite common over every domain. If it's not, if it is those kinds of pages, then you should definitely avoid placing your ad units there. Because again, what, what these big partners will do is that they will decrease the demand that is going towards the supply. Um, and as you see here in the next example, another kind of a, a page on the website, which is the terms of use page. Here again, you should ask yourself, is this content engaging? Probably it isn't. Like we said, it's not the user hasn't come for your terms of use page. I'm sure it's very interesting, but uh, it's not the reason that the user has come to the page. So that's the question you need to think, to always try to think in what places you can spot, uh, you can put it on your website and try to avoid those spots which are not the reasons why your user base has come uh, to your website uh, on a daily basis, let's say. So um, next we have something else which is very interesting and something that we always try to uh, prevent when we're speaking with our publishers, UGC or user, mod, mod, uh, user generated content, forums, comment sections, all these kinds of things where it's more the user coming with uh, different kinds of, in, uh, of comments that they're making and it's not the page itself or the website itself creating the content is something that you should look out for when you're deciding to put ad units. So don't get me wrong, placing forums on your website is definitely fine, but trying to monetize your ads in those kinds of pages is something that uh, should be avoided. The reason is because it will Again, for example, if, if there's curse words or stuff that, that are not so positive and, and uh, creatives or ads are just around that, it will be again something that Google will check with its algorithm, for example, and they will see that, uh, that there's this negative assimilation between the ads and the content. And for that reason, there's option one, which is to try to avoid it. And there's option two, which is to try to moderate it. So what does this mean? Just to uh, there's all different kinds of products, but if you have, for example, a bot that checks before the comment is posted, if there's curse words, if there's nudity, if, if, if there's something that's not okay, or perhaps a person, a part of your team does it. In other words, if it's moderated, it's fine. If it's not moderated, try to avoid placing your ad units across these kinds of uh, ads, uh, content, sorry. So next we have uh, SEO. Uh, we finished layout content. I would want to also kind of touch a bit upon uh, SEO. Just generally, um, I'll give you a few more seconds to think about SEO, how it can be relevant actually to you. Um, and while you're thinking, I will uh, sum up the, the factors that we think are important for uh, SEO and why it can be very relevant to layout and content. Generally, uh, we think it can be relevant to ad layout, uh, to content of the page itself, but also to page speed. Um, above and below the fold, something that you definitely know a lot about as well. When it's above the fold, ads are placed uh, in the window that the user is situated in when he enters the page. If it's below the fold, he will have to scroll down. Sometimes uh, we see our publishers think that just placing above the fold, because obviously, the more viewability, the higher viewability percentage for your ad units, the better the performance is obviously, because if it's not very viewable, then, then the performances will be hurt by that. But just, just going with that, with that mindset and just placing ads above the fold will just lead to page speeds or latency or page speeds to decrease actually and latency to increase, which will hurt again the, bad, the user experience and can also hurt then your SEO, in other words. So placing too little 
above the fold will lead to little monetization and too much will just lead to bad SEO just because of the page speed. So reasonable degree, as, as you see just in front of you, is always the key here. Uh, try to put it, to place it above and to also place it under. Uh, we know also from studies uh, from big SSPs such as Sonobi, for example, uh, maybe we'll, we can speak about that in the Q&A, but that they see that placing ad units below the fold can also be very beneficial for uh, websites just generally. So next we have SEO and page speed. Like we spoke, about, we spoke about a bit about page speed, but just making or having an efficient page speed. Uh, so trying to be as efficient possible with, with the uh, different kind of scripts that you have on your website can also mean better SEO. So scripts of ad units, uh, all different kinds of things that you can optimize on the layout of your website itself can, uh, if correctly implemented, reduce the, the weight or the toll to a minimum, meaning again, better SEO. Google likes it when uh, the page speed is at, is at its optimal. And there's a lot of tools that you can try to uh, uh, use from Google also, for example, so that you can see how your page uh, speeds generally for your website is uh, scoring. Uh, last thing regarding SEO is uh, content. Um, generally, again, this can be very relevant for SEO. Why? Because we sometimes see with publishers uh, that broken, redirecting to broken links, for example, or redirecting to empty pages, or as you see here to your right, a YouTube video that doesn't work anymore. This just redirects your user to another page but it's a page that's not so valuable again. So for that reason, we always suggest to have updated links. The more you update your links, the more articles you have, the more there's uh, engagement happening on your website, the better you will score in, in uh, these search engine optimiz search engines, basically. And you will have much, much better scores. And obviously um, with that said, having better SEO, will just lead to more users coming to your to your uh, website at the end of the day. And obviously it will mean also better, much better optimization. So that's the mindset that you need to have to always try to think about the user base, how to give them uh, the best experience possible so that they just come back uh, tomorrow. Um, that said, what else can you do uh, as our last slide? And then we'll uh, go over the Q and A. Uh, our teams at Brightcom will always assist you uh, with optimizing ad layout and content on your website. We always try to suggest what are the, like, like we've been trying now over this past uh, 30, 40 minutes to say, what are the do's, what are the don'ts, what are things that you should avoid, what are things that can maybe improve your performances. Um, next, we have also the Google policy portal, which is something we definitely suggest you to look uh, out. It's in every, uh, Google Ad Manager account. And here you can actually see things that uh, red flags, you could say, that Google has uh, flagged for you. So it, for example, it can say that you're clustering too many ads on your website. So you know, okay, I'm doing this wrong. I should do this uh, in a better way. Then we have uh, monitoring your RPMs is generally, if you're having consistent RPMs and you see that from one day to the other or from a week to the other, the RPMs have really plummeted, this can mean that there must be some correlation with your website. So you should think to yourself then, have I changed anything in my layout? Is there something different about the content that I'm posting on the website? What can be different uh, in other words that you have uh, differences that you have implemented, stuff that are new on your website that, have, that could have caused this RPM. So this is always something that you need to think about. Um, generally, we believe in sharing uh, insights continuously. So we always love, as we said in the first point, to help you with all kinds of questions, things that you think you're not so sure, certain about. Uh, this is definitely something that we recommend uh, to ask us if you have any needs uh, on a daily basis. And lastly, which is part of sharing these insights is that this presentation also uh, will be available for you after this presentation. We're also, we also have one pagers uh, and so on that can just uh, help you maybe with uh, placing ad units on cr across your website and we'll show you what uh, should be prevented, what can be done. Uh, it's quite clear. So we will try to send you this uh, after this webinar. And obviously, again, if you have any questions, documents, uh, things that you want, uh, always feel uh, free to uh, ask us about it. So uh, that's it. Thank you very much for joining this webinar. Uh, I hope 
that you could uh, gain some more insights today. Uh, and yeah, I, I had a blast at least. So I'm very happy uh, that that uh, this webinar was uh, was uh, very positive. So uh, 